So in this video, we're going to move on to the second law, which is the one that has to do with division. But before then, I would like to um, practice with you some of these questions that require your knowledge and understanding of this law. So I'm just going to use it to solve this problem. If you can solve all of these problems, you fully understand this law. So let's go on. So let's say the first one. The first one says 3 to the 4th multiplied by 3 to the 6th. And that looks exactly like this. So our 4 will be the 8th and the B will be the 6th. We just need to add the powers together. So that gives us 3 to the 4 plus 6. That gives us 3 to the 10th. That's all you need to do. You're done with that. You don't need to bother yourself with anything else. Let's go to the second question. It is 3 to the 5th multiplied by 2 to the 3rd. So, uh, not the same base. Same base, not the same base. There's nothing you can do to this one. So, that's your answer. Okay? Do not try to do anything to this. Okay? They don't have the same base, so leave them alone. Uh, in the later in the, uh, later videos, I will explain to you what could happen even when the bases are not the same, but the exponents, yeah, but don't, don't do anything yet, okay, unless you know what to do. So let's just leave that. This was a trap question because it was supposed to tempt you into applying some laws, but you can't apply this law to this because this is 3 and this is 2. If this was 3 and 3 or 2 and 2, then you could apply the law to it. So this one, your answer is 3 to the 5th multiplied by 2 to the 3rd. There's nothing you can do with that. Now let's go to number 3. Number 3 is now you don't just have exponents, you also have numbers. However, these are not numbers written as, written as exponents. They're just numbers. So it's as if you're saying 2 multiplied by 7. So when you see questions like this, look for the coefficients, okay? Look for the, co the coefficients are the numbers that are multiplying the variables or the letters or the symbols. So in this case, 2 is just a coefficient, 7 is just a coefficient. You can multiply 2 by 7 and you get 14. Remember to do that, okay? Don't apply the law to it, they're just numbers. So multiply them, that gives you 14. Now, we can go into the rule where you have to put these two beside each other. You have x, and then, you know, let me just break it down further. Let me undo this. Why don't you look at this as 2 multiplied by 7, then multiplied by x to the 6th, multiplied by x to the 3rd. Now, that looks better. So you know you've brought out everything, you've rearranged them side by side, but because this is just a multiplication sign. When you're multiplying, it doesn't matter which one you multiply first. You multiply first. Um, what's important is that you put them side by side so you can apply this rule. So let's go to the rule that we have. Um, this is now two times seven gives you 14. And this rule says it will be x to the power of the sum of the powers. It should be six plus three. And that gives you 14x to the 9. Okay, that's your answer. Let's go to the last one. The same rule applies. The parentheses around them just means you should multiply. The reason they're in parentheses usually is because of the negative sign. So they don't want you to confuse the negative sign as if it's a subtraction. Because just imagine if this was not there. It looks as if you're doing this minus this. But so you know it's multiplication, that's why we're doing this. So the parenthesis tells you to multiply. You apply the same principle as we applied here. It's negative 3 times negative 4. So if you have that, negative 3 times negative 4, first negative 3 times negative 4. I would recommend you put them in parenthesis. Okay? And then you have x to the 11 multiplied by x to the third. So when you deal with this, you're going to have negative 3 times negative 4 is going to be positive 12. Okay? So you have 12, and when you add these powers together, because the base is the same, it's going to be 11 plus 3. 
which gives you 12. Oh, I'm sorry, there's an X missing. Let's go here, 12 X. So that's gonna be 12 X to the 14. That's the answer to that. Just remember, if you see numbers that are not written as exponents, just multiply them like you would normally multiply numbers. And the ones, the letters that have exponents are what you deal with applying this law. Okay, if you need to go over this, you may pause this video at this point because I'm going to erase it. Uh, and I want to introduce the second law that um, is important for us to know. So, look at this very well and pause the video if you would like to. Otherwise, let's move on. So, the second law that we're going to apply is number two, the law that applies to division. X divided X to the A divided by X to the B will be equal to X to the A minus B. You could almost predict that. You could almost tell that whenever you're doing division, it's the opposite of multiplication. So when you're adding in multiplication, you'll be subtracting in division. So, what you have in this case is that, just let's do this. Let's take an example. If you have 2 to the 5th power, and you're dividing it by 2 to the 3rd power, this is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that is 5 times. You have multiplied 5, and then you're about to divide it by 2 times 2 times 2. This will divide this, this will divide this, and this will divide this. What you have left is just 2 times 2, which is going to be 2 to the second power. Well, that's the rule. Instead of you having to write out everything, just subtract 3 from 5. So, why don't you just say this is equal to 2 to the power of 5 minus 3, which is 2 to the second. And 2 to the second is 2 times 2, which we know is 4. Okay? So, your answer will be 4. So, you may be asked to leave your answer like this or like this. It depends on what the question tells you to do. Otherwise, this would be your final answer. Okay, so the rule applies whenever you are dividing, this is what you have. There is a warning that I want you to all see. It is that as you go higher in math, this symbol is not usually adopted for division. We don't usually say 2 to the power of 5 divided by 2 to the power of 2. Okay, this doesn't usually show up. You use this in elementary school. I think it's time to drop it. Okay, and also, for your sake, avoid writing things like this, 2 to the power of 5 divided by 2 to the power of 2 or 3. I think this was 3. Okay, don't do the side slashes. Just write it this way. It's better to write this way because this is clear. Okay, um, as we go further, in your algebra, you'll find out that you cannot write half of x, sorry, one half of x, like this, half of x, you can't write half of x and say it is 1 slash 2x. This is confusing because this is not this, because this is actually 1 over 2x, which I'm sure is not what you were intending to write. So you want to avoid the slash and you want to avoid this. It's better to write this way. That's why the textbook writes this way instead of this way or this way. This way in some tiny explanations, but not all the time. In, in math that is beyond elementary school. Okay, so you, you, you understand now. So that's the rule that governs division. When you're di dividing two terms, that's what you have. So let's take some worked examples and we will take a break. So let's say you have 
x to the power of 2 divided by x. Well, you know, when x is standing alone, it means there's a 1 here. This is the same thing as x to the power of 2 minus 1, which is x to the power of 1, which is the same like this. You don't need to write the 1. Okay? That's equal to x. Let's take a second example. Let's say we have 24x squared y divided by 8xy. Okay, 24x squared y divided by 8xy. All you have to do is ask yourself, is there a number here? Yes. Is there a number here? Yes. The first thing to do is, remember you deal with the numbers as numbers. You don't apply any of these laws. You just assume that these are not there. What you have is just 24 over 8. So you write that out. This would be equal to 24 over 8 multiplied by, now look at the letters that are used in the problem. You see x here and there's x here. Just separate them in a vertical column. Just write x squared over x. So you've dealt with this and this. So what is left is the y multiplied by y over y. In this case, 8 in 24 is going to be 3. You can apply the rule of division here. It's going to be x to the power of 2 minus 1 multiplied by y divided by 1 by y is going to be 1. So everything here is just going to be 1 because this will just cancel this out. So what you have left is 3x to the power of 2 minus 1 is 1, 3x to the power of 1. That's your answer. Let's take another example. So, let's say, let's put the example here. Example 3, okay, example, example 3. So let's say the problem was a little bit more complicated, okay? Let's say it was negative 2x to the ninth power multiplied by 4xm divided by 3axn. Let's see. Let's say that was the problem. Well, okay, now this is still the same principle you have to apply to everything. So let's see, because it's important that you know what to do when you have letters that are on one side but not on the other side. The best thing to do is to put one on the other side. Let's see. So right now, we have a problem that looks like this. Remember, the first thing is to deal with what is on the top and see if you can bring them first together. Make sure you have a simplified expression on top and then you have what you have under, then you can deal from top to bottom. But firstly, you wanna clear whatever confusion you might, you might have on the numerator first. So right now, we're gonna multiply and we have two numbers. We have negative two and four. We have to multiply those first. So negative two, negative 2 multiplied by 4 is the first thing you do and then the next thing is look for the letters well usually I like following the alphabetical order so M comes before X so I'm going to deal with M um, there's only one M so I'm just going to write the M here okay and then I go to the next letter which is going to be X so um, X this is X to the ninth and X to the first so that is x to the ninth times x to the first power. Now, everything divided by what is here, it is 3a. Well, you can put m before x. That's what I should have done. amx. That would work better. amx. Okay, so at this point, um, let's just resolve what's on top. Negative 2 times 4 is going to be negative 8 multiplied by m, multiplied by, when you apply this first law, it's going to be 9 plus 1. Remember, this is going to be 1, so that gives you x to the 10th, divided by, 
what you have here is going to be 3 multiplied by A multiplied by M multiplied by X. So at this point, it is so obvious that this M is going to cancel this M out. Um, that's it. And this is X to the first. So 10 minus 1 is going to be 9. So eventually, when you have the numbers separated in those vertical columns, like I said, it will be negative 8 over 3 multiplied by uh, there's no a here so you let it be let the a be um, there's 10 minus 1 so because there is no a you might just write 1 on top of it divided by a okay where did the 1 come from there's always a 1 when you're multiplying there are so many ones you can have as many ones on top or anywhere because ones don't change anything okay as far as the value is concerned so you can put a 1 if there's no partner for it put a 1 there Okay, so this gives you x to the 10th, multiply x to the 10th over x. So this gives you negative 8 over 3, multiplied by 1 over a, multiplied by x to the power of 10 minus 1. And I'm going to write the top, uh, the rest of it on top. That's negative 8 over 3, and this is 1 over a. And what is left? x to the ninth power. So my answer is going to be negative 8 over 3. Okay? Uh, you can decide to just put this together. That's multiply. If you multiply 3 by a, it's going to be 3a. And this x to the ninth is going to be up here. x to the ninth. That's your answer. Negative 8x to the ninth raised to power. I mean, divided by 3a. This is 3a. Okay, so that would work out that way. It looks complicated, but if you follow the steps, you may not need to take as many steps as I have taken because you could as well just write your answers straight. Okay, even right from here. You could have gotten your answers from here knowing that this will take this out. I was just trying to show the laws because let's say I didn't go this route. I just went ahead from here my answer would have been negative 8. This would have taken this out, and this would have taken this out. Okay? And what is left is negative 8x to the ninth power divided by 3a. So this is the fastest step, but I had to go into, I was trying to go back to the original to show you what this was. So now you understand the first law, which is for multiplication, its product, and then you have the quotient law, which means you subtract the, the powers. Um, well, the other law, we'll, we'll get to it uh, very soon, when something is raised to power zero and when it's a negative exponent. I hope you have learned something in this video. I um, will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching up to this point. Please like, share, and subscribe. And um, hit the notification bell in case you want to know when I upload the next video. My name is Newton Okewoye. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.